Um, obviously, part of our campaign here is really to encourage folks to donate uh, and give in that way. But you know, if there's someone that is viewing this this video uh, and they're concerned, maybe in this moment, about a friend or a family member, um, what steps should they take that have proven to be the most effective? So, if if you're watching this uh, and you're worried about somebody, um, here's some simple things that you can do. Uh, First is to reach out to them, to, to talk to them and to see how they're doing. Uh, you may not be worried necessarily about them thinking about suicide, but they may just be not themselves and their anxiety, their distress might be higher. It's really important to take that initiative and reach out. Say, how are you doing? Or just doesn't seem like you've been yourself lately or things are really stressful for all of us. How are you doing in these times? Just a very general, broad question, but take that take that initiative to reach out and find out how they're doing. Now, likewise, if you are concerned that somebody really might be suicidal, they might be thinking about suicide, it's really important to reach out to them too, but it's a different kind of question. You need to be really direct in that question. You need to ask them, have you been thinking about suicide or you've been thinking about uh, not being here any longer? You need to be more direct in that kind of question. But this first step is about reaching out. If, if we don't, each one of us, take some part in suicide prevention, tragically sometimes we miss it. So the first step is to reach out and ask the question. The second thing is to, to listen. And we need to listen and really pay attention to what they're telling us. We need to find out if they have any thoughts about the future, any hope, any opportunities that are coming up, any reasons to live, any sense of purpose that they have. Do they have a connection to resources and supports and professional help? All of those things are protective and they help us help somebody else get through these crises. If they don't, we want to try to get them connected to things. And that's where responding comes in. We want to make sure that we let them know that they can get through this, that we can help them. We may not be able to do it for them, but we want to get them connected to a resource. So the third thing is responding, and the third and fourth thing go together. The fourth thing is about knowing resources. It's really important for people to know there's a National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Anybody can call that 24 hours a day. It's free. It's anonymous at 800-273-8255. 800-273-8255. Knowing a resource like that and being able to respond and say to somebody, who might be distressed or who might be in a crisis is really important. We know that as people really struggle with illnesses, they don't see options, they don't see alternatives. So you being able to respond and give them a resource is very helpful. If they don't want to talk to somebody, they can text. They can text with a crisis counselor at the crisis text line. All they have to do is text the word hello to 741-741. That's it. They can start a texting conversation. Again, in your responding, you want to know resources. You want to make sure you give those resources to somebody. The last thing I would say is that we want to provide hope. We need to provide hope to people that they can get through this crisis. We want to provide hope to them that there is a future for them. Other people have been there. Other people have survived, and they can too. By connecting and staying connected to them and getting them resources and by following up with them, checking in with them, so it's not just this one-off conversation and giving a resource and then saying, go use that, but it's coming back to them the next day or the next few days, either texting them or calling them or if you can visit with them safely, uh, making sure that you're staying connected gets them through this crisis. Those are the kinds of things we want somebody to do if they're worried about somebody that's just struggling or worried about somebody who might be suicidal. Thank you, Dan, for that. And we'll put those numbers right in the right underneath the interview here. You see the links to all those resources and, and specific telephone numbers. I know one of the encouraging things um, that we talk about every year when we seem to meet at the tournament is there are success stories around individuals who have used these resources. Uh, and we, we constantly run into friends of our tournament uh, that have somebody in the family uh, that have reached out, that have found those resources, that have gotten people connected. Uh, and they do work. And I know that's obviously a huge part of what SAVE does is connects people to uh, those resources in the moment. So uh, we'll, again, include those links below. I can't encourage or support what Dan said enough. If you feel like there's a need to reach out, please do so. 
uh, especially in the, in the environment that we all find ourselves in for, you know, what is an uncertain amount of time. Um, just a couple more. Um, so let me, let me say that, that you know, if, if you just don't know, if you just want to know more, if, if you don't know if you should even be asking, then go to our website, just save.org, S-A-V-E.org, and they can learn. They can learn the, the warning signs, the symptoms, the risk factors, the protective factors, and they can learn more about how to ask the questions. So if you just don't know, um, that's a great resource as well. Yeah, that's great. Uh, just a couple more questions, and again, thank you for your time, Dan. Really appreciate it. Um, I know every time, every, it seems every year when we get a chance to connect, um, there's a new program that SAVE is working on and getting ready to roll out. So just curious, uh, what's what's either new and has just been rolled out or is on the horizon for SAVE uh, in terms of some specific programs? Yeah, um, great question. We actually have uh, a couple things. Uh, one, we just actually finished a couple new pieces. We have these one-page documents that are online and they're uh, on our website. They're free and accessible to people. We just finished one on drugs and suicide prevention uh, because we obviously know about uh, that connection, uh, whether it's alcohol or other drugs. But we also um, just finished a new piece on storytelling and how to convey and connect uh, your story through others but through writing uh, to help people who are who are struggling. So those are a couple of the, the new uh, simple things that we make available to everyone. But we have two new programs that we're launching actually here in September that we've been working on for quite a while. Uh, the first one is a program called One Step Ahead. It's a new workplace suicide prevention and mental health program. Uh, this is all gonna be on a, on a learning platform uh, for companies of all sizes, shapes, uh, around the country. They, they will be able to purchase this program. They'll be able to purchase a base of getting into our resource library that has uh, templates and it has videos and it has all kinds of information and PDFs of, of specific things that each company should go through around prevention, intervention, and postvention. And then there'll be some add-ons that they can purchase as well around specific trainings uh, for people throughout the company. It's a major undertaking uh, that we've been building this program and we're pretty excited to launch that later this month. Again, it's called One Step Ahead. The other program that we're launching that is brand new that started uh, just under a year ago is a program with uh, the construction industry. Many people don't know that um, right now, occupationally, those in the construction and the mining industry have the highest rates of suicide. Uh, so uh, we were approached uh, to develop a partnership with an insurance company called Willis Towers Watson. They're a global company, and they uh, uh, really cover a lot of the largest construction and contractors and businesses in this country and around the world. And we have developed a new uh, program that has multiple levels uh, for all of the construction industry. Uh, level one is going to reach all 7 million people in the construction industry. I'll say more about that in just one second. Level two is going to reach managers and foremen and supervisors with, with more directed training. And level three is going to reach the, the C-suite group uh, among the construction industry with uh, how to change the culture and how to provide leadership in that industry. But probably the biggest component of this is that, is that level one. Level one is going to consist of five different modules and there are um, videos, there's toolbox talks, there's all kinds of information that we've created for that that is going to go out to the entire industry. So over 7 million people in the construction industry for free are going to have access to these new modules to really help uh, try to reduce and prevent suicide among the construction industry. So we're very excited about the partnership with Lewis Harris Watson. We're excited about the work we're doing with them. In fact, um, uh, on World Suicide Prevention Day, September 10th, uh, there's a, a major construction conference where we're holding an opening plenary session with them, a panel. And then on September 11th, we're having another session with uh, at the conference, uh, again, for all virtual, but we're still having a session on how to communicate safely about mental health and suicide in the construction industry. It's a major initiative to reach a, a much needed group. Wow, what great programs, and I know you're very excited about those. And for those that are watching, again, 
it's perfect examples of what happens to your donation dollars and how they get immediately invested, as you heard, at a very high rate into these very individual and specific programs. So if you haven't clicked the donate button yet, this has got to be a reason to click the donate button. So please get out there and do that. Uh, anything in closing, uh, Dan, that you'd like to share, especially with those that maybe are, are new to, to save and, and the work that you're doing? Uh, well, again, uh, thanks, Chad, and, and Hope, for, for all that you've done. Really, you have um, facilitated and made possible many things to happen here at SAVE, not just for families that you've been able to help with their process of grieving. Uh, some of these prevention programs, the dollars that you've given, have enabled us to be able to be there and help people in the darkest times of their life and to prevent something like that from happening. So we're really grateful uh, to you for all of your work and to all of those that have participated in the Tom Box tournament over these last several years. Um, it has grown, it has expanded. The, the fun and the interest uh, in the event has grown and the, the dollars to support it have um, really helped us uh, grow as an organization and be able to do the work that we do. I think if I were to, to try to wrap up with something, I would say um, this is a really hard topic. It's a really hard subject and people don't want to think about it and yet, um, tragically, it, it impacts most of us. Most people don't realize that we lose someone every 10 minutes in this country, every 28 seconds, somebody attempts to take their life in this country. And this is young people, uh, kids as young as five and six. It is teenagers, it is adults, it is our seniors. Um, just in the last week, uh, I worked with one family of a 71 year old who we lost and we're helping the family in grief and a 70 year old who we were able to save and get connected and get him to the help that he needs um, but also to provide the kinds of information for the family to, to help keep him safe in this process so we have all of that here uh, and, and that is what keeps us going is is that yes we, we we've lost some people but we've also saved people. And in, in every person we save saves a family and it saves a community and it saves businesses and it saves other kids in schools. The work that we do literally is about saving lives. Even in those tragedies, it is about helping others. Uh, some people may have heard that just this last week, uh, there was a news reporter in the southern part of the United States who two years ago lost her daughter to her son to suicide and and around the second anniversary here um, she took her life as well mm -hmm. uh, we know that survivors are at greater risk and this is why whether we're preventing a suicide uh, or helping a family that's grieving to prevent them from going on to die by suicide we have to do this work we're really fortunate to have donors that help us. We're really fortunate to have some corporations that want to support us. Uh, but this work takes a lot, um, 24 hours a day. We are here, we're available, we're getting calls, we're getting emails, we're getting messages through Facebook from around the world. From around the world, just this week I was helping a woman who about four years ago lost her daughter to suicide. She's really struggling and she's in New Zealand and had no idea where to turn to or what to do to get help. All of this is to say that you're all part of this. It takes everybody to help prevent a suicide. It can't just be me and it can't just be the staff here at SAVE or our hundreds of volunteers across the country. It takes all of us to be able to talk about this, to be able to speak openly about this, not to dwell on it not to make light of it, but to say this is a real problem in our culture. It's a real problem in our world. And as long as we can acknowledge it and just say, yes, it's out there, like all the other illnesses that are out there, that's going to open up the opportunity for somebody to say, hey, I'm not doing well. And if we can hear somebody saying, I'm not doing well, and we can be there to support them, most of the time we can get them through it. And that doesn't, again, have to be me. It's all of us. So we, we really need everybody to, to really get their hands wrapped around the fact that suicide prevention is everyone's business. It's not just a doctor. It's not just a therapist. It's all of our responsibility. The more of us that are willing to say, hey, talk to me. I want to be here for you. I can't solve the problem for you. I may not be able to take away the pain for you, but. I want to help you. I want to be there for you. I want to help you get through this. We can get through it together. 
will get you to the right resources. That's what's going to prevent suicides. That's what's going to put me out of a job. And that's really my goal here is to be out of a job. So all of us make a difference in saving people's lives. It's not just one of us. It's not just this office. It's all of us. And the sooner we can get everybody to be okay talking about it and not just putting it away, putting it in somebody else's problem, the less lives we're going to lose to suicide. Well, thank those are really, really uh, impressive words. And I can't thank you enough. I know you know how much SAVE has helped me individually. I know how much SAVE has helped uh, friends and families of the tournament and people that show up year after year as part of their process. Uh, I know that continues to be uh, the fight, so to speak, is the, the education, the reducing the stigma. I know that's something that you show up every day to do. Um, I'd love to help put you out of a job someday as well. Um, so to everyone out there, if you haven't yet, again, uh, we'll have links to all the resources. Spend some time on save.org. It's an amazing organization. Uh, click that donate button. We're going to raise as much as we can as part of this campaign. Uh, so thank you in advance for doing that. And Dan, again, thank you so much for spending some time with us in this crazy environment that we find ourselves in. But we're going to use it as an opportunity to increase our outreach even more than we have in a, in a typical year. So. Uh, we're going to make the best of the situation. Um, so again, thank you so much, and I look forward to uh, connecting with you soon. Thanks. See you.